today. We're off on a big sky country blast and cast. Got one? All right, Scott. Another brownie. Out here, the pheasants roam, grown up kids play, and the wind blows all day. And I'm, I think I need a, a sleeveless t shirt on. It'd be perfect. Rooster Tales, presented by Pheasants Forever. Hi everybody, welcome to the show. The Dakotas get a lot of attention every year in the upland bird hunting world, and rightly so. Their numbers are always near the top. But Montana isn't far behind. Scott Franzen took a trip west to experience a big sky country blast and cast adventure. When Horace Greeley said, go west, young man, I don't think he had pheasant hunting and trout fishing in mind. But that is precisely what cameraman Ben Elling and I are thinking when we saddled up the GMC for a blast and cast adventure in big sky country. Getting close. We are at one of my favorite places in the world, Montana. And not just any place in Montana, Fort Smith along the Bighorn River. I have fished here for many years for trout and always have heard about the fantastic pheasant hunting. So we're gonna get to do a little of both. But we are not the only cowboys in this rodeo. I have lassoed a few other hands to help me corral our finned and feathered friends. Rooster! We're gonna be hunting with Matt McMeans, lodge owner from Kingfisher Lodge, longtime friend. I have fished with Matt many, many, many years. And my goofy brother-in-law, Scott Bittman. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's kind of like they're painted on. Oh. One half of Dumb and Dumber. It's what all the cool guys use. That's what I use. It's got a basement to it, it's so cold. Do some people call us Dumb and Dumber? Which one are you? Uh, I would probably be neither. It could be you. I think it's both your names all at once. They just call you Dee Dee. <laughs> It's called Polish Chrome. Rooster! I'm never going to hear the end of this. Dumber shot another one. Rounding out our posse will be Sean Fritzler and Mike Kelly and his ZZ Top beard. Well, here. here goes a hand, hand! Hand, hand. Hang on a minute, cowboy. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's get this horse back in the barn and start the story at the beginning of the trail. Here's how this hunt really began. Tuesday night, we turn off the light and we can hear a little wind outside. By about 2.30, all the windows were rattling. We could hear chairs blowing over out in front. We wake up in the morning and it's 50 mile an hour plus winds. Local area, 37 degrees, 21 for a low. Mostly cloudy conditions, four to three mile an hour winds out of the northwest, sustained winds. But I heard today was like around 50 for gusts. Well, it'll make it interesting, to say the least. I hope you don't blow away. Did you bring your rocks? Rocks in my pocket. <laughs> so when the weather throws you a curveball, what do you do? You go hunting. He's real hot up here too. This is the Crow Indian Reservation. Big reservation altogether, I think it's 3.2 million acres. 
with the tribe opening up bird hunting on the reservation here, that opened up a little more than a million acres to everybody. So it's just, it's incredible. We're pushing a lot of birds, I think. The wind makes it tough because the dogs can smell them so much further up, they want to be up where, where they are. So it's tough to keep them kind of reined in. Look at them all. Beginning to wonder if we're ever going to see a bird go down? Well, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Rooster! Rooster Tales is brought to you by Franke, Star Bank, Maple Grove Lock and Safe, Luther Hudson GMC, and by Curon Chamber and Visitors Bureau. Okay. So our good friend the wind made us adjust our sails a little bit as we try to catch up to crafty Montana pheasants. What's the weather like? Calm. Yeah. Balmy. <laughs> it's very tropical. I'm looking for my sunblock. <laughs> and I'm, I think I need a, a sleeveless t-shirt on. It'd be perfect. <laughs> But this wasn't this cowboy's first rodeo. So with some new strategery, a little bit of the buck was leaving this bucking bronco. Okay, okay, I know it's bad, but I couldn't resist. That's a rooster! Nice our dogs and our shooting irons begin to heat up. Good looking bird. Yeah, you want pepper? You want pepper? Yeah. Really some nice cover here for the birds. How's the wind? Well, they're down here. Well, I think that's why they're holding so tight. It's still pretty breezy. I don't know what to do with my hair now. <laughs> Man, I can't believe this. I'm never going to hear the end of this. Dumber shot another one. He's a hot today, baby. He's hot today. Hold it up. In, in. Yeah. Rooster! In. Rooster! Nice shot! Alright! Hold it up nice. Spurs. I did not expect to have the hunting that we had on that first day. I thought we'd see birds, but I didn't think they'd hold as tight as they did. We had a split second before they got up and got in the jet stream to make a shot and Scott in particular made some phenomenal shots on birds popping up from the cattail. Beautiful. I would say the most surprising thing I saw was how well Scott Bittman shot. I was I was really shocked by that. That 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 took a lot of multitasking. <laughs> Why were you so surprised when you actually hit a few of these birds? Because uh, I don't get a chance to shoot very much. So, yeah, the first one was like, oh, did I hit that? <laughs> I was amazed at how well that went. The birds held really well. The ones that got up, we were able to, we didn't miss many birds. First bird! I don't believe we lost any birds because of the dogs. As you saw, we had seven and eight dogs at a time. Good dogs. It was really a treat. 
The area around here is truly spectacular. The, the scenic view as you're walking in this great open plains, like I say, the, the uh, snow-capped mountains that you can glance over your shoulder and see. The unbelievable habitat and amount of birds were uh, a pleasant surprise, that's for sure. Rooster Tales is brought to you by Appledorn Sunset Bay Resort, Wildfowler, Connecticut, Nutrisource, Lucky Duck Crates, and by Aberdeen, South Dakota. With a break in the wind, we thought it'd be a good time to put the guns away for the cast portion of our Montana cast and blast. Although, one of our party seems to be having a slight equipment malfunction. No, do you have, do you have the thinning thing on? I don't know, those pants are kind of doing it for you. <laughs> do, do, they, do they make me look fat? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It's kind of like they're painted on. Oh. I think I kind of worked up a sweat. My, probably putting them on was the worst. Kind of a yoga Pilates exercise there. <laughs> so it's a beautiful day here in Montana. We're gonna take a little break from the bird hunting. This river fishes year round. We have Really good, you know, late season. You get a lot of variety and obviously not near the amount of people. Um, there's a lot of days where you feel like you're on, on your own private river. Oh! Cool! The rainbow, rainbow trout. One up on my brother-in-law. I think I just had a nibble. <laughs> Whoa! -ho! He's a jumper. Got a net? Whoa, yeah! Come on, buddy. That was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> oh! He lost it. I love it. What was that, Scott? 20 incher, probably? Is it brown? Is it a nice brown? It was a brown. 18 inches, maybe? Well, you gotta lie. I don't think it was as big as mine, though. It was way bigger. Oh! Got one? All right, Scott. Too nice. Too none. Not that I'm counting. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, you I is. Brotherly love at its finest. Kind of hog in the river. I am. Can you find another spot to fish? Oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh. I'd like to say it has something to do with the flies. His fishing was definitely one of those, you know, segments for me that, you know, you just have to walk away from and pretend, you know, that you're not a part of I got another rat's nest. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Make a sweater fit, then? <laughs> Knit one, pearl one, right? Boy, I think I need both pair of glasses for this one. What happened before, they didn't put hooks on my flies. See, I switched flies then, and then I started hooking fish. No way! Got one! Go brown. Got one? Do you want to reel it in? No. Another brownie. I thought that fish was making my pipes look pretty big there, though. Hey, Ben, this way to the trout. Another brown? Yeah. As they say in the biz, that's a wrap. Or as they say on the farm, even a blind sow finds an acorn once in a while.
Pheasants Forever's mission is to protect and restore wildlife habitat. Without habitat, we don't have wildlife and we don't have places to hunt. Without you, Pheasants Forever has one less voice in their fight for conservation. Join Pheasants Forever today to help us create healthy habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Sign up at this web address and you'll receive a one-year subscription to Pheasants Forever Journal, plus this signature series Pheasants Forever Duffel Bag. Your $35 will make a difference today that will last forever. Rooster Tales is brought to you by Oak Tree Lodge, Minnesota Horse and Hunt Club, Elk Mound Seed since 1933, North Dakota Tourism, and by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light Beers, the official beer of Rooster Tales. Life on the open range can be tough. You never know when or where you might find your next meal. We've got cakes, venison tenderloin, and an egg. And some strawberry for some health. A little fiber. As for these cowboys, as usual, we ate like it was our last meal. Fuel for the day's hunt. With the tanks topped off, we are ready for day two of our Montana adventure. We're gonna hunt this draw up Starts out real narrow at the bottom, gets into some more cattails. There's a corn strip that follows it the whole way up. Wind died down a little bit, which means he won't be able to hit anything. <laughs> We got point here. Rooster! As the morning begins to warm, the dogs are hot with the smell of pheasants. But these late season Montana birds are not making things easy. I think we got a lot of birds running ahead of us here. Dogs are real birdies. Rooster! Rooster! Hand! Hand! Rooster! Nice shot. Boy, you're quick, man. I, did, I had my gun open, too. <laughs> Come on, dogs. Get bird. They're wanting to sit pretty tight. That one was right under my feet. Cattails and the birds are getting thicker as we move up this bighorn coulee. Rooster! What happened? What? You're you're mortal. <laughs> Rooster! Nice. When you're hunting thick cover, like we've hunted the last couple of days, what you lose behind the camera, some of the beauty of the dogs going through, getting hot, they're harder to see. But the beauty of it is the retrieves these dogs are making in thick, thick cover. We drop birds in some of the thickest things that I've ever hunted, yet we did not lose a single pheasant on this trip. Brett, here. My favorite part of it is the dog work. I, I love watching dogs. Like that little pup that ran with us all day, that's one of my favorite things is, is watching a young pup slowly get it and then boom, the green light comes on. Uh, it, that's the whole fun of it for me. Chris 
Well, I think there's a great amount of birds here in, in this state. There's a bird coming over our head. Sometimes I think it gets overlooked, you know, North Dakota, South Dakota, you know, they're, they're really famous for their, their pheasants, but uh, there's a lot of birds here too. You guys got to see the last couple of days, we really got into the pheasants. Well, I will tell you what, Sean, this cowboy has found a new home on the range, and I will be back to chase these Montana pheasants. You can bet your shooting iron on that. Sorry, I just couldn't resist. Good buddies, great bird dogs, and premium habitat. That is a recipe for a memorable hunt. We've reached the end of the field. Remember, please take the time to introduce somebody new to hunting. It just might change their life. On behalf of Pheasants Forever, thank you for watching.